Hey everybody, just one real quick message before this video starts. Our original Griswold and Gunnison, the one on the bottom there, we will be shooting it fairly soon, and we believe it'll be the first uh, Griswold and Gunnison ever shot on camera, and probably the first shot in well over 100 years. So if you'd love to see that, please click subscribe. New. Old. New. Old. New. Old. everybody welcome back to my channel it is the wild snapper here so as you can tell well turned into the all griswold gunnison all the time channel <laughs> but uh as you can see we have the original griswold and gunnison right here and we have the pieta replica of a griswold and gunnison this is a very very new replica of a griswold and gunnison so if anybody watching this video knows who Squibload is, he's a YouTuber as well. And if you have been watching any of his videos, you would see this exact Griswold and Gunnison be opened. He sent it to me and have a small comparison between them. And after that is done, I am going to do my best to try to replicate the lean on the original Griswold and Gunnison for his Pieta and make him a set of grips for it. Now. I don't know how well you're going to be able to tell this, but if you look at the very bottom one, the Griswold and Gunnison is much thinner uh, across the frame in this dimension. It comes up quite a bit higher. And if you notice, this loops back around. The Griswold and Gunnison kind of goes straight, and then the back, and it's basically if you took this grip frame and bent it backwards. That's kind of the best way of doing it, and then also thinning it out up here a little bit. And But basically what I'm going to end up doing for him is giving this gun that lean. So his Griswold and Gunnison is a much more accurate representation of a Griswold and Gunnison. Now, that is not what this video is for. It's just kind of a, a show you this come out today. There will be a full review on both guns and how they compare. But... This right now is just a, let's do a small, quick just comparison over the difference before or until I get the amount of time to actually put together a much larger, better video. One of my first problems with this firearm, and I've noticed this a lot with Pieta right now. So it's become very obvious that Pieta is now laser engraving a lot of the markings on their gun. Now if you look at this side, it seems just a little off can't quite put your finger what it is. Well, look past the L. You'll see the dimension a little bit. Right, right about there. There'll be another little L. So this thing was out of jig and out of position. Instead of cleaning it up, they just hit print again. Pieta is putting all these plastic two-piece grips on their gun. Why? Why? And, dear God, Pieta, whoever you let design this. This is why you should not drink and design guns. Stop it. Get some help. And, for God's sake, if you're going to stick something on, at least fit it. It's not fit to the pistol. Um, it, it makes no sense why they would be doing this. And it's not fitted properly. And it just, it truly makes the gun look cheap. But, with that aside, the pistol is quite nice. I actually do like it quite a bit. I might be picking one of these up myself so I don't shoot my original one too much. Very well timed. Locks up very nice. And it's what you would expect. It is a brand new gun. Feels like it's nice and tight. Oh yeah, nice and tight. So it's a great little pistol. I would highly recommend these. And another quick add-on to that. Okay, so... In the past, people have always given brass frame guns a pretty bad rep. Even myself, I do. But modern brass frame guns, they're made of a, an alloy of brass that is much more brittle than regular brass is. During the 70s, 80s, 90s, I don't know when they switched to this new alloy, but the, the brass is much stronger in a way. 
It's brittle, but it's stronger, being so it can't stretch. And the even term saying a frame is stretched is misleading because that's not what's really happening. Uh, in real life, uh, and real quick, on a completely different subject, if you ever have your barrel stuck and you're pulling on it, I see this all the time, just go to half cock, drop your loading lever, and just give it a pop. See? Come right off. Ta -da. Doesn't take much. So what is actually happening is you see the back of the cylinder where the gear teeth are. The gear teeth are digging into this area down here. And when they get shot, they'll be always in the same position. So the gear will be in one exact position. Boom, all that pressure backwards slams it into the back of that, that uh, brass and it actually indents it a little bit. And that is actually compressing the metal back. And usually with a, a brass front gun, when you cock it, you'll notice that the, the, I'll simulate it, but like this one's new, so it's obviously straight. But if it was, you'll notice that the cylinder would actually go forward and then back, forward and then back. That is actually what's happening. The frame is not stretching. It is the gears are pounding on the inside here, causing that to be a problem. And as a matter of fact, this is what I had to do to the Griswold and Gunnison, because it is an original, it's real brass, so it's, it's shot loose. As a matter of fact, almost every original one is shot loose. And I say almost everyone, because there's only like two or three that aren't. Um, this one is no longer shot loose, but I had to make a new arbor, because it actually didn't have its arbor. And that back piece down here, I on my lathe, I cut out a piece of brass. I should have used maybe like steel, because then it would actually last longer. I might go back and redo it. But using an end mill, cut that down, because it had its, its peaks and valleys from the gear. Cut it down, and then I ended up measuring how much I cut out of it. And I made a brass washer that went into it. And all I had to do was cut this one whole side of the brass washer off, stuck it in there using, um, oh, what did I use? It was Loctite, and I used a couple tiny little pins so it couldn't rotate. Uh, and that's how the, the original Griswold down here is set. Also something that I would like to, very, to clarify as well, when the cylinder is inside, it's not just resting on these gears. This circle you see that's all the way around it, that is its technical thrust bearing. Um, it's supposed to be riding... Uh, in between the gear and these pins. And you can see a little bit where it was riding. Now, on the older guns as well, being the, the brass was so soft, uh, soft excuse me, the, this would actually compress as well. And being that it's supposed to be riding on this and just barely riding on the gears, if not at all, um, manufacturing on the guns back then weren't that well. So likelihood would be most of the guns were actually riding on their gears, not the thrust bearing. But if they were riding on both, they would still shoot loose over a long period of time. With these modern ones, it's very unlikely they'll shoot loose. Because it's so much more brittle, it doesn't have that softness of the impacting pushing it in. So I'm not saying that they won't stretch over a long period, long period of time, but there are many people out there with thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds through brass frame guns, these newer ones, and the gun's fine. So, as just a recap, as a difference between the two firearms is the only major difference is just that grip angle and there will be a longer much better uh, comparison between the two of them but i just got this in today from squib load so thank you very much squib i appreciate it brother and we'll take them out and shoot both of them quick to note is you see all the black in here this gun has actually not been fired it might have been fired at the factory obviously but this is all polishing compound from when they polish the brass that is bad. Any polishing compound is going to have some, for, some sort of grit to it. Um, some do wear down to nothing over time. They, they slowly wear themselves out. Some don't. We don't know what that is. But if you have anything like that, this is another very important reason when you first buy a gun like this to completely disassemble it and clean it as best as possible. If you have a ultrasonic cleaner, that is much preferred because it would help remove anything that is embedded already in the brass, if it's there or metal, because this stuff will cause premature wear very quickly. Now, I might be wrong on this. I might be wrong, but I am a stickler for color case hardening, and I know you, Bertie and Pieta, don't use color case hardening for their frames, but I'll be damned if this, this hammer 
looks like it's actually color case hardened, not just the chemical process where they nickel it because it's not shiny. Even the loading lever. I have not very many guns that you could still see the color case hardening on, but I have messed with color case hardening for a long time, and I I can spot the Uberti Pieta, you know, the frames from a mile away. It's so easy to tell when you've seen the real color case hardening. I, mean, I might be wrong, but my God, does that look actually like real color case hardening? I'm sorry the camera isn't doing it justice, but it even feels right. Huh. This loading lever and this trigger, I mean the hammer, excuse me, that really looks like color case hardening. Other than the tiny little nitpicking details, this gun is a fantastic gun. I think it's a very good gun for the price, and I believe it'll be a very good shooter. We will be modifying this one to look more like the original Griswold and Gunnison, putting the grip angle on it. And for everyone else, I am trying to grow this channel, so if you found this video worthy enough, would you please like, share, and subscribe.